Hey, everybody, if you love combat sports such as MMA, Kyokushin, boxing, BJJ, etc., make sure to hit the like, share, subscribe, and comment button on the Drew Spirience channel, the show that's 80% combat sports and 20% everything else. Thank you to the supporters of Marshall Way Blog, One Kyokushin, KRT Tips and Tricks, and Real Talk that the Marshall Way hosts with Shian Terry Burkett. These three pages... I work together with them in order to grow Kyokushin Karate. So no matter the association or level you are in Kyokushin, if you have content to share to grow Kyokushin Karate, make sure to like and message us and we'll do what we can to help your page or pages grow. Also, thank you to the supporter Moments Management. If you're an up-and-coming fighter, especially in my Kyokushin crowd, if you're looking to go prof professional, finding a good manager is very hard. Luckily, there's Moments Management where Nima Safapur and his team will make sure you understand what you're getting into with pro fighting and that you are educated for before, during, and after, so you leave healthy and wealthy. Moments management, where quality and care come first. And also, if you're in Quebec, you want to take up martial arts, and you want to get into Kyokushin, I always recommend Kyokushin Boucherville with uh, Shian Pierre Catafor and his amazing team of other senseis and Shian, such as Sensei Joan Fournier, amongst others, in Ikeo Nakamura. If you're looking to learn new habits, discover tradition with martial arts, make sure to check them out. Ikeo Nakamura. If you're looking to take your health into your hands and develop good habits and uh, discover a vast new community and make new friendships, they are the ones to look forward to. And with that, we'll get to our guest. One. Hey, everybody, this is the Drew Spirience, the show that's 80% combat sports and 20% everything else. My guest today has been one that I've been seeking out for a long time. We've had a lot of back and forth. He said yes, I said yes. Then the timing always had to be rebooked. I've had his coach on from Kaizen MMA, the legendary Nima uh, Mazari, who is an ancient and Kyokushin champion hailing from Iran my father's country. Um, he is a, a very, he is a, what I like to call a blue chip prospect, which means he is really, there's the potential is limitless. Um, my, uh, one of my old friends from Montreal, shout out to Sandro Ferrante, recommended I get him on because the talent on this guy is unreal. After I watched him win the welterweight rocket championship, he's also done ancient karate and Kyokushin too, but ancient Kyokushin is the same. He is up and coming. He is an expert in IT, but he is also a killer in the cage. He is the one, the only, the Moroccan mauler, Eunice Abyss. How do I say, how do I say your last name? Abyss Soror. Abisu, you, I'm going to try it again. Yunus, the Moroccan mauler, Abisuur. Yes, you, there you go. Hey, okay. Thank you, man. I am so honored to be on here. Uh, very happy that you really wanted me to be here. It uh, means a lot. And uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, hear my story and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I hear from you as well. You're, you're the next... I'm the next big thing in MMA. You're the next big thing in podcasting. I'm I'm talking to the next Joe Rogan. Right now. <laughs> Thank you. I really am humbled by that. And yeah, yeah, I dream big. You know, that's what I do. I just go about it. And my goal in life is not to just talk to the pros, but to the up and comers like you, because yeah. they remember that I want to give sure. them a chance because I was given a chance by some of the big names and I want to pay that back by giving it to those who are only just starting to write their story. Yes. Yes. And, and this is literally my first ever podcast interview. So uh, I'll never forget this, you know? So I'm no matter, no matter where life takes and, and I'll always come back, you know, no matter how big I get, I'll always come back and I, I, you're not gonna, even going to need me because you're going to be big yourself. So I like to keep my relationships because relationships are the real currency not exactly. money. Money is a secondary. Relationships are what makes you rich. That's how I look Very at true. it. Very true. Very true. It's the network that you can get from that uh, is limitless. And uh, what, what do they say? They say um, um, reputation or uh, what's the word? But something like that is, uh, is a, actually a type of um, goodwill. It's actually mm -hmm. a type of account in accounting is mm -hmm. goodwill. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it makes sense. It, Awesome. So Yunez, you know, you've had a, you're a very, you have a very interesting story because you're telling it to me last night and I had to add it to my, uh, out, I added it to my outline so I don't forget, but how did you discover martial arts? Mm -hmm. So actually, um, in a way it kind of discovered me, you know, um, I don't know what it was when I was, when I was a kid, like only like 
three, four years old, everyone, everyone around me always noticed that like I was a very aggressive kid, like not, not in a mean way, but like just whenever I'd play around with other kids, I'd play really rough. Uh, I always wanted to be physical. I, I never wanted to just uh, play uh, on my own or uh, keep my hands to myself. I always wanted to be physical and have someone challenge me physically. It was a weird thing. And my, my mom saw it since I was three, four, and then five. And then, and, 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 and I started having problems when I got into school, I started having problems because the, the, uh, the parents would always complain to my mother about, oh, your son has too much energy. He, he, uh, he hurts too many kids. And I, I can remember myself never being like a mean child. It was just purely, um, I craved that, that physical challenge with any, anyone that I played with, anyone that I felt like could, uh, could take it. And, and then my mom one day, uh, she saw a grand opening of a karate gym uh, right next to our, um, our uh, neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And she asked me, do you want to start karate? I'm like, yes. And this is when I was five years old. And just as a coincidence, it was Sensei Nima's gym. Mm. How crazy is that? Just, just out of luck, I am there with one of the best best striking coaches in the world so it, it, it just I, I was truly lucky about that you know and I was also truly lucky about my mother uh being proactive and not like just uh telling me here take some med medication to chill out you know no she she put me in um something that was beneficial uh taught me discipline um made me made me really um use my energy in a positive way, you know? And, um, but yeah, like when I started, I remember the fir very first day in Sensei Nima's gym and it was grand opening. It was the first day he mm -hmm. ever opened it in the Falls Church, Virginia location. It was literally walking distance from where I lived. And I walk in and it was me and one girl, one boy, that's it. It was three students. It was the first time he ever, it was the first class he ever opened in that look it, it, ever in, in America. <clears throat> and uh, I remember uh, like every single, I would be training almost every single day since a young age, since five years old. And uh, I trained, I trained every day, every single day I did it, I got better and better. And I started to like it even more and more and more. And uh, that's where Sensei Nima saw like that competitive spirit in me. And he gave me that extra push and mm -hmm. uh, never took it easy on me. Fast forward, like maybe four, uh, four or five years, like I'm like about 10 years old or ever, no, ever since I was like six, seven, I've been competing. But yeah, I've been competing in uh, Kyokushin uh, tournaments, Inshin tournaments. And then uh, once I turned like eight, nine, he would always put me with older kids older kids and and there was this thing in Inshin where you win your uh division your weight division then you fight somebody in a higher weight division oh. so it's like it was it was called grand championship you know mm -hmm. and I remember I would never win that grand championship because the the the, the difference in size was too much because mm -hmm. I was I was still very young and I would go against people way older and I would already go against people older in my weight division and uh, but I would win my weight division almost every year. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once I would get to the grand championship, I would lose because they were just way, way, way older. And it would always bug me. But later down the road, now, now that I'm older, I realized the value in that where Sensei Nima just wanted to push me. You know what I mean? He, he saw something in me. He knew that me winning every single year, getting what I want wasn't worth it you know mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm i'm at the time i was always mad about it i'm like why am i going against all these people that are older than me why why this why this but now i see the value in it like i can i can walk in into a sparring with a ufc fighter and i'm not intimidated because i've mm -hmm. been i've been going with guys that are more experienced or um 
bigger than me or anything like that since a young age, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I, I now see the value in that. So fast forward, like about three years, I'm like 13, 14. I get my black belt in ancient karate. Uh, and uh, I, I, after like so many years of training in martial arts, I kind of felt like um, I'd say burnt out. I was mm-hmm. still a young kid, you know? And I wanted to try out other sports. I tried out, um, actually in high school, I did a year of wrestling. I, I was still trying mm-hmm. to discover myself, you know? I played basketball, football, soccer. Uh, I did a little bit of track even. I was a lot skinnier back then. So I was able to run a lot better. Um, but yeah, like I even did one year of wrestling and that was huge for me. That was that one season of wrestling. I didn't like wrestling after one season. Uh, and I went back to uh, kickboxing at Kaizen here and there, you know, I still was, I was still juggling like three different sports Mm -hmm. with kickboxing at Kaizen. Uh, But I was still like, how do I say, um, discovering myself, like, what do I really like? What do I want to do? Then fast forward after high school, um, I, I was 18. I started full on MMA. Okay. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So, so that's when I started jujitsu along with the uh, wrestling at the MMA gym at Kaizen. And I remember being 18, uh, I, at Kaizen, we had, at the time we had Kamal Shalarus. And Whoa. yeah, yeah, we had Kamal Shalarus uh, and he, and at that time he had kind of just fought Habib. So he was, he was an active UFC fighter. And I remember like looking at Kamal, I'm like, damn, this is an active UFC fighter. Like, this is so cool. And I'm learning wrestling from him like every week uh, because he was teaching a class over there at Kaizen. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I remember telling him, uh, I remember telling Sensei Nima and uh, Kamal, uh, and, and I had forgot this, but Kamal reminded me that he was like, the first day I walked in when I was 18, I was like, I wanna be a fighter. And Kamal was like, I see it. I saw it in your eyes that you were not joking. And he was like, he was like, okay, okay. Like, we'll see. And then, uh, but yeah, it, it, now, now he's like extremely proud of me. Sensei Nima is extremely proud of me. And, but before, be, before Sensei Nima truly believed me, cause Sensei Nima, you know, as, as a gym owner, he hears many people saying, even though I trained with him for so many years, he hears so many people saying, oh, I want to be an MMA fighter. I want to, and you know, like everyone, everyone their first week thinks that they're going to be the next big thing, you know, until, until they go into the sparring rounds and, and the grueling fight camps and they go like, nah, screw this. This is, this is not for me, you know? So fast forward two years later, I'm 20 years old. I did about two years of full-on MMA and uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I still, still was not convinced of what I wanted to do. You know, like um, I, I, was, I was in college, uh, I was working, life was busy. I didn't know, I, I was putting so much time into training. I'm like, if I'm not even gonna do this, why am I putting this much time and effort into it? Uh, so I just kind of slowly, cut back on it until I stopped entirely for about two years. Then some things happened in my life, some personal um, uh, calamities happened. And I kind of like went through like, kind of like a slight depression. I wouldn't say I was depressed. That would be, I, I guess, I guess that's the wrong word to say, but like, I was just sad for a long period of time. And I wanted that, uh, how do I say, um, that community again, you know what I mean? I was, when I, when I was, when I was training with a bunch of teammates and, uh, and um, it's, it's different from just going to the gym all by yourself, you know, like when you have a team around you, motivating you, and we're all after the same goal, it, 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 there, there is no, you, you don't have time to think about being sad or whatever for the most part. I mean, it depends on what the, what the problem is, but it helped me. I came back to the MMA gym uh, at 22. And uh, when I started training again, I really saw my potential. And I'm just like, man, I'm just gonna give it all I got. Cause I remember remember that time when I was uh, eight in a, 
20 to 22, when I had stopped, I had done two years of MMA, uh, 18 to 20, 18 to 20. And I'm, I remember telling people like, man, I really believe if I, because at the time you got to re remember in MMA, I had zero accolades. Okay. I, I won a lot of stuff in Inshin, but in MMA, I'm still technically a white belt. I hadn't even gotten my blue belt at that time. Even though I did two years, I didn't get my blue belt. I didn't do any fights. Um, it was just sparrings and nobody knows about that, you know? So I remember telling people, man, if I put all my time and effort into this, I can truly be top 10 in the world in my weight class. I can, I can do it. I know I can do it. Everyone was just like, man, stop, stop being cocky. Stop, sh shut up. Like, and I'm like, no, I, I really believe this. And there's nothing. They can't believe it. And then um, when, I, when I came back at 22, I was training and I, I saw the potential. I saw how good I was doing. I was, I was beating amateur fighters. I was being, beating pro fighters, like just real quick, getting back into it, not, not too long after getting back into it. And Sensei Nima saw this. And when I had come back at that time, Sensei Nima didn't let me go. He was like, look, you are way, way more, way higher level than average in the amateur level like way higher, higher level than average and amateur level, you should give it a try and let's get you addicted. And then I was like, okay, uh, uh, I, my, my mindset was, okay, I'll, I'll do a fight. Like I, I wasn't really, I, I, I wanted just my competitiveness. I wanted to be an amazing fighter and I wanted to beat, I wanted to be able to beat pro fighters, but I, I didn't want to actually fight if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. you know? Part of it was, um, religious reasons part of it was uh me being uh me 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 not liking like like i said when i even when i was younger i love i loved to play aggressive but i didn't actually like to hurt people does that make sense yeah it does so i was always conflicted i'm like mm, like hitting people and stuff it's it feels wrong religiously like because in islam you're not even allowed to strike an animal you know mm -hmm. and and i'm just like man i'm i'm striking humans uh for for technically no reason like why why should i do this but i was like look i'm gonna try this once let's see let's see how i like it you know and uh and man I, I, I freaking loved it. It, it. it was, it was the best day of my life. I can, I can say this about every fight of mine is the best day of my life. And I, I, and I came to think about fighting. I mean, a lot of, a lot of, a lot, some Muslims will disagree with me on how I look at it. Um, where I, I look at it as me testing myself, me, um, going in there, uh, really testing myself, seeing, because I, I, I'm a martial artist and I want to be the type that like, if somebody attacks my friends or my relatives or anything like that, I'm the one protecting. And how can I, how can I protect if I've never been in there in a competition with a real life situation, you know? Uh, so that's kind of how it started. And now it's, it's really just an art for me to see what really works in mm -hmm. combat, you know? So, exactly. uh, yeah. That's so, awesome. I mean, basically it, 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 it was good. I did that first fight. I, uh, I lost by decision. Uh, it was, it was a very close fight. Couldn't went either way. Uh, it was also another very talented guy. Uh, I could have been much more aggressive in that fight, but you know, no excuses. Like, uh, the better man won that night. Uh, and then, and then I came back the next fight, I dominated a decision a year later, then, uh, a few months after that, I did another fight. I, uh, I dominated, I won my first round knockout. Mm -hmm. Then I went through injuries and the pandemic and all that. I didn't fight for about two years. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was about, it was almost two years that I didn't fight. 
Uh, and uh, that was my latest fight, May 2021. I won by second round knockout to win uh, the Rocket Combat Sports Welterweight mm. Championship. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask too, because so like it's like crazy, like that's like it's like straight out of a movie, a memoir, like everything. So you know, you said you're also a Muslim, so. You know, this is a question that I that I have for those who are devout in their faith, but and also uh, find a way to complement it with martial arts. How has your faith in uh, Islam helped make you a better fighter in the discipline side of making sure you're consistent? So, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm. It, 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 it would be a lot. It would be a disrespect to a lot of very good Muslims for me to mm -hmm. say I'm a devout Muslim. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say I'm the best Muslim. I try to be, I, 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 and I'm trying. I'm trying to get better, you know. Uh, and I hope, I hope that like uh, this year I'm a lot because uh, Ramadan is coming up. I'm hoping that I get way better. But what I'd say, what I'd say is, Islam has a lot of um, a lot of advantages as an athlete. Like first of all, you're not you're not allowed to drink, uh, you're not allowed to smoke, you're not allowed mm -hmm. to, um, you know, um, waste your time with uh, pointless things. So, all these are are things that uh, go well with an athlete's lifestyle. So that's why you see a lot of like Muslim fighters that are on the top of their game, like Muhammad Salah, um, uh, Sadio Mane from soccer, uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov, uh, like. The, the way they live, they live very, very clean, you know, clean lives. And they don't waste, they don't waste their time with anything pointless. They're, they're always on their goal. And, uh, and that's, and that's kind of like the, the discipline of having to pray five times a day, uh, certain times, you know what I mean? Uh, you can't, you can't be late even by a minute for any prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, these, these are things that help like the, because what what is fighting fighting is all about uh like fight preparation is all about planning uh discipline um making making your organizing your time for your different training sessions so i think i think it's highly beneficial for anyone like not anyone that is muslim it is it, they they see when when they become a better muslim they also become a better athlete mm -hmm. As well as as well as Christian, I see a lot of Christian fighters that they're very close to their faith, mm -hmm. and uh, it makes them it makes them a better fighter. Uh, as well as uh, I don't know I don't know too many Jewish fighters, but I'm pretty sure it should be the same thing, you know. There, I think there is like I know there was a famous Jewish boxer that's very to his faith, like he does the Sabbath, he does Yom Kippur, but the, it's it's interesting like how I always like to say because one of my closest friends who. Uh, at first coached me, but now, you know, it's beyond coaching. He's just a friend, you know, because he's like, he's part of my close circle named Mohammed um, and he's Algerian. And when we talk about faith, it's so interesting though, how all the faiths are connected and how they can help make us better people. And in, and on our craft too, like, mm -hmm. for example, what I take from being Jewish and, you know, with Yom Kippur, our holiest holiday, when mm -hmm. I'm fasting, it helps detoxify. I fear, I feel I have a better clear thought. And in Islam, what you guys did with Ramadan, you took from the idea from Yom Kippur, it turns out so we're really kind of cousins. People just don't yeah. want to know exactly, um, yeah. Ramadan. They extended it to a month. But, mm -hmm. And when you look at the, the meaning of Ramadan and how you apply it to your everyday life, as I could with Yom Kippur, that's only one day, it's amazing how it keeps you focused on the goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, um, I, I totally agree with that. Like, when, when, when you're in a vulnerable state, like fasting and whatnot, you really, it, it, it detoxifies your mind even, not just your body. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you you have a like you said you have a clear mind you're you're able to think think about things a lot better um and and it, and it brings out that um that kind of like hunter instinct in you to like be laser focused in uh in your tasks in your in your thought in your in your goal so yeah mm -hmm. i agree and so, you know, you, you had like, you, you had all those accolades, you had all those accomplishments and then you took a break, you were trying other sports and then you had some personal setbacks. Um, now, when you, when you came back, 
Um, actually, not when you came back. So I want. So obviously, this question is: It seems that from what you're telling me, that N Sensei Nima was an important influence for you. So was uh, Kamal Shalarus being a pro fighter. Were there any other influences you had, like that you never met, that you just wanted to look to to be like this fighter? I could take from him a as inspiration or motivation for my discipline. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Like uh, a, a big influence from when I first started fighting mm -hmm. is actually your hometown guy, uh, George St. Pierre. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, I, I, and he, he was also a Kyukushin karate background, uh, me being Inshin, but like, you, like we said, it's the same thing, you know? So, and, and I saw myself having kind of the same type of body frame mm -hmm. as he does. Um, I have the same type of outlook of martial arts where uh, I believe you should be well-rounded. And he, he was one of the first people to be well-rounded and have it be successful. You know what I mean? Uh, he wasn't the best wrestler. He wasn't the best uh, jujitsu guy. He wasn't the best striker, but when he puts it all together, he was the best in the cage. Mm. You know? uh, and I'm just like, man, this, this works because anyone you go against, you are at least better than them at two things. Cause at that time people were either just a wrestler or they were just a striker or, uh, they were just a jujitsu guy. So when he would go in there against a boxer uh, or a striker, he would be better than them at wrestling and jujitsu. When he would go in there against a wrestler, he's better than them at striking and jujitsu. So he always had at least two ways to beat almost every single fighter. Mm -hmm. And man, that is rare, man. That is like, like even till today, even till today to find, I mean, guys are a lot more well-rounded now, but I feel like, because he started so early at being well-rounded, he mastered that craft. And uh, I remember when I first, very first, when I first started MMA, I looked at him and I'm like, man, I'm going to, I'm not going to just try to be okay. Uh, Cause I was already like, uh, striking came easy for me, you know, but wrestling and grappling didn't come as easy to me at first. So I'm just like, man, because I, I can make a choice. I can try to become exceptional striking and then okay, decent grappling and wrestling. But I'm like, man, no, I'd rather be very good. I'd, I'd rather be good wrestler, good striker, good, uh, good, good wrestler, good jujitsu, good striker, you know? And that's, that's the path I took, like, instead of like going all the way with my striking. So and, and then that's why, that's why I ended up coming to TriStar to train for a month, two years ago before the pandemic. And I wanted to spend more time over there, maybe like a year or two, learn from the great minds like uh, George St. Pierre, Faraz Zahabi, but it, it didn't work out because of pandemic, you know, and, uh, and the situation in Canada. But in the future, I do plan to, uh, make make trips over there and 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 spend a lot more time out mm -hmm. there in montreal and train with the great minds like george st pierre faraz zahabi very very nice people super mm -hmm. super nice uh coach sandro as well coach sandro man amazing amazing striking coach over there um yeah like i can't i can't say i i used to always listen to podcasts of faraz zahabi just listening to him talk and and he, he he's such a great mind himself and uh yeah like so that's what got me introduced to tristar mm -hmm. and, and then when i got the chance to train with george st pierre um that was like a surreal experience itself and and such a nice guy you know like going out going out of his way to smile at me you know what i mean he didn't even know who i was you know at the time like he he probably still doesn't but he he he, he didn't even know who i was and he's just like uh smiling at me for no reason, just, and, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's awesome. Like he, I know he's not even like a religious guy, but in Islam, we have a saying, um, a smile is, um, is like a charity. You know what I mean? And, 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 and there, that, that is, that is true. Like the, the happiness, like, like, look, I'm, I'm looking up to this guy since I was a little kid. And then I'm looking at him and I'm, I'm just looking at him at the gym and he's like smiling at me. I'm like, dude, this is, this is amazing. And then, and then also not only him, there, there were many other guys that 
like I looked up to and I got to spar with, like, for example, Rory McDonald, mm -hmm. got to spar with him, went very good rounds with him. Uh, Olivier Aubin went great rounds with him too. Like, um, and, and, and it's just, and, and having them like tell me like that, like Rory McDonald told me that I was very tough and that was just pff, like, crazy experience you know and N uh, nice uh, endorsement from uh from from one of the from one of the the best yes yes and 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 olivia aubin uh being very impressed with my striking uh and telling me that like i'm welcome any any time and then uh you know like and and little things like that and like he followed me on instagram like just little things like that mandel nalo as well like mm -hmm. it was just it was just great experience and the people that i'm able to meet through fighting is 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 amazing because to to be able to do something like this you really have to be a special person you know and and i'm getting to meet a lot of very very special people and and i'm happy about that that's amazing and there's like other there's like others and then if you come back now there's a punch 360 the new tri-star west island that's where coach sandro is shout out to him uh xavier the uh, uh, bread man alui and uh, matt resniak like they're doing their thing with more striking there but it's like an yeah. affiliate with tristar but yeah, yeah no like sandro really was the one that got me to to take a look at you because i love looking at the prospects did you ever have a chance to meet david moon as well because he was another one that was at tristar yes 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 oh and and also i don't want to forget shout out to xavier alawi yeah. uh he's a moroccan brother man very very nice guy man i remember when i when i was gonna make the move to mm -hmm. montreal to stay there for a year or two he he was gonna help me throughout the whole way and i hadn't even even met him because when i was in tristar he was out on a i, I think a work trip somewhere mm -hmm. and uh so I, or vacation i can't remember but i didn't even get to meet him but just the fact that he saw the passion in me and uh, he had heard that like uh, I am a hard worker and and I'm serious and I'm also Moroccan like him. He he just he 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 did everything in his power to try to help me to in the process of that. But yeah, David Moon, I did I got to spar with him and it it, it was it was an amazing uh, amazing amazing guy, amazing amazing super super nice guy. You would never even think he's a fighter, you know really like he's he's that nice of a person and um yeah like and 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 he's also a muslim brother like mm -hmm. uh, uh c c coming from uh, korea and uh yeah like extremely extremely nice nice person like i don't know you, you, you the stereotype is really true with you canadians you guys are very very nice yeah it's true david actually was my first ever coach in martial arts because oh, yeah? i don't as i said i don't want to make the show about me it's about you but just to yeah. give you a small small abstract yeah. when i got when I, I used to play ice hockey and and yeah. and deck which is ball hockey which is running on the floor yeah. and when i got into mma and martial arts finally people were laughing at me getting into taekwondo saying you should do this david at our all and when i worked with him in my first job told everyone hey he's getting into martial arts be proud of him no matter what style he chooses and he'll find his way then yeah. when i quit taekwondo because it wasn't for me i found kyokushin which is more for my build and the, and my for my body type david was uh, very happy for me and i had him help me prepare he helped me prepare for my first tournament and he did the best he could i came with a third place finish at the time which was great um and then he said look he's like i think you need this your your current friend mohammed because He's up your alley. I'm more of an MMA striking. Hey, he's more Kyokushin, so he'll know more. But he's like, I know you're in good hands. And he's like, I'm always here if you need. And that's just, it's just Dave, man. He's, he's such a charitable. He's yeah. such a good guy. Same with Xavier, Xavier too. Xavier, I, I always butcher their name. His, it's X-Man's name. I call him X-Man. X-Man, <laughs> the bread man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and yeah, David, such a nice person. Xavier, such a nice guy. Mm. Uh, Sandro, amazing, amazing coach. I and, love Sandro. Uh, yeah. I love Sandro. He was the one that really, when I first started doing my podcast, he was one of the few originals that came on and said, you're going somewhere with this. Don't give it up. Cause I had an audio yeah. show before it was only on audio. We don't talk about it. I buried it six feet under like the mob, like the mafia buries their, yeah. their, uh, their opponents. I'm um, just a bad joke, but uh, now there's this one, which is video and audio. And Sandro's like, you're doing it. He's like, you're actually doing it and uh, i you, you never forget those that gave you the shot along the way that's that's the most important when you're coming up in any field like you always yeah. have to the relationships as we were telling at the beginning relationships and network are 
key in every exactly. field or endeavor exactly. you have. Exactly. And, and hey, like, he, he's not lying. I, I agree with him. Like, and, and I, I'm not the type that lies to people. Like, you, you truly just keep, keep, keep doing this. Like, really, like, I can feel the passion that you have. And honestly, in this type of thing, passion is everything. You know what I mean? Like, passion takes you far, you know? Uh, like, like this I, I would say this isn't like fighting where a lot of people are passionate about fighting but they just don't possess the the physical capabilities to fight for example mm -hmm. but this if you're just passionate enough and pump out enough content in what I see and that's what you do and uh, you're super passionate about I, I felt like the, the way you were talking to me yesterday, I was pumped about this. Like, I was like, like you were just like so excited about it. And I, I, I was just like, damn, I'm excited about this. Like, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> so yeah, just keep, keep going, man. Like you're going to, you're going to be big. You have to love what you do because there's many times people come to me. I want to start a podcast. I don't know. And you have to really know your niche. Like if this is a niche you love, you have mm -hmm. to love it. Like you talk about it to your coworkers at the water cooler or your friends every day and tell them stuff. That's what the most important thing is. And if you don't have that passion or the expertise in the niche, you're going to burn. You're not, you're not, you're going to give up. I know, I know a few people that bought the equipment, thought they could start it. And then they said, oh, I gave up. And it's like, I, I just spent all this money and I wasted it. And I was like, man then you shouldn't have done it then more maybe you should have done more research of what you're doing that's the key same with fighting you have to really see if it's for you and you have to embrace the struggle you're going to get a lot of no's you're going to eat a lot of shit before yeah. you start seeing the gold but and and the and the and the gold is in that pile of shit that you that you take facts. yeah facts facts it's it's very true and uh yeah and i, I also Another thing I, I forgot to mention about when I when I was talking about like my upbringing in uh, sports and martial arts is um, I also my, my mom a big reason why she put me in this and she was able to see um, what I'm I mean she she was she was an athlete herself so mm -hmm. she she was a division one uh, NCAA division one all American in oh. track and field that's that's literally how she got recruited to America. She, she came to America through track and field. She was Moroccan champion. And, um, at such a young age, at only like 17, 18, she became Moroccan champion and, uh, she made it to the junior world championships. And at that time, the junior world championships was here in America and everyone that made it to the junior world championships got full, full scholarship offers, uh, from the top schools in the country. And, um, uh, and yeah, she so she ended up coming here and got a uh, division. She got she got all American, made it to the national championship all three years that she competed in uh, college in America. And she was going to she was about to be in the two thousand Greece Olympics, but she missed the she missed the trials mm. because uh, she got pregnant the year before. So it was unfortunate. So that kind of ended her. Uh, it wasn't me. It was actually not me. It was my younger sister that she was pregnant with. Oh, okay. Actually, with me when she was pregnant with me, she 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 had taken a year off, came back and got all American the next year. It's wow. Crazy. Her, her dedication was insane. Like she would she would wake up at six a.m. She would tell me she would wake up at six a.m. Um, run ten miles at seven minutes per mile. Then she would uh, come back. Uh, she would come back home do her schoolwork then she would go do the track training the actual her actual training uh with the team then come back home finish some more ass assignments do a classes and stuff then in the afternoon at late afternoon evening she would be lifting weights so and that was like almost every single day for her six days a week so her her, her her dedication was insane and and I, I i think i would like to think that's where a lot of where i got it from and uh, growing up, I always saw her as like the standard, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and and uh, in a, in a lot of other sports, I didn't have that except track. I did have a natural talent towards track, but I just didn't enjoy it. Like I, like I told you, mm -hmm. since I was a kid, I enjoyed that physical um, that physical challenge, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I always craved that um, warrior instinct to be taken mm -hmm. out and um but yeah and 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 since a young age 
anything combat came so easy. Like my first day in, in, in ancient karate is just, it was just natural. It, 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 everything just flowed. It's, it's, a, it's something that I didn't get with soccer, basketball, mm -hmm. football, anything like that. Combat, anything combat was just like boom, 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 boom. Like it, it, you, you didn't have to tell me twice. Tell me once mm -hmm. and I'll just do it, you know? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's when I knew like, this is the sport for me, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like whatever it is in combat, that's what it is for me and and i i took the same standard that my mom had i always reached for that you know so mm -hmm. i always had a chip on my shoulder uh to try to prove myself to be where my mom mm -hmm. was you know and uh i'm still and and she's already proud of me but uh she she has high hopes for me like she her her standard is i want you to be world champion you know oh, and I like wow. that. that's amazing because yeah. not many parents are going to support that goal to say, yeah, you're a fighter, you know, it's not a career. But if, if you have your mom's uh, approval to do this, Hey, do you have that? You have it, man. That's, that's yeah. the, that is the most important thing. If your parents exactly. are supporting you, definitely, that's the key. Definitely. And, and, and I'd say my parents are great. Like, so my, my dad was um, like, he was all about education, education, mm -hmm. education. Like he's, he's a PhD in uh, economics like he's a very very smart guy and uh he never really liked me he, he always liked sports and martial arts but he never really liked the cage fighting like it, it was just too extreme for me always and it still is it still is too extreme for him but how he thinks of it is if you're gonna do this be good at it so <laughs> he, he if, if i'm ever eating junk food he's like uh, looking at me with a side eye, you know, like, and like, you know, um, same with my mom. Uh, but my mom, she, I wouldn't say she likes fighting, but she likes the thought of me becoming world champion at a sport. Mm -hmm. And that's always what she wanted. And I had chose this sport and she, so because I like it, she likes, it, you know, Awesome. That's really good. So I guess that, you know, the, and then, you know, to, to take it off with the, the last question here is, um, you know, you won rocket to the rocket, the championship in 2021, amazing, amazing performance. The way you went in there with the calf kick it to like really, uh, dismantle your opponent, uh, amazing game plan that Nima had with you. And I love that walkout with the, with the, the song confined by El Dugu. I can't say the, the rapper's name, but it's like, that's your walkout song. Like for me, my, my walkout. Oh fuck. I don't have a walkout song. Really. I have like many, I always tell my, I'm like, I always tell my, my, uh, Mohammed and my karate master, Pierre, she and Pierre, I say, guys, this is my walkout song. And they're like, okay, you're going to change it up next week too now. But no, that confined is like, you're a walkout song. The way you walk out with the Moroccan flag, <laughs> um, dominant win. Like, as I said, it's on Instagram for those who want to watch it. Like, and if you love MMA in all forms, whether it's, uh, uh whether it's a professional or amateur, but one of the best performances I've seen, um, you, no problem, man. Hey, I got to state the facts. And that's the thing people, people have to know who the Moroccan mauler is because it's, he's, he's coming. He's coming like Hamza Chemaev, Islam Makachev. Like I call you Islam and Hamza Jr. Sometimes for, <laughs> it's a compliment. It's a compliment just to Thank let you know. Yeah. Um, what's next for you with the uh, rocket to, after the rocket win and beyond with uh, your journey? So um, I have, I have some news. Just look out for me in the, in the next, I'd say two, three months. Mm -hmm. I will be fighting again next two, three months, make my professional debut. I was already supposed to make my professional debut in November. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wasn't just wasting my time this time lately. Uh, I, I was really supposed to fight in November, but my opponent uh, pulled out oh. uh, because he, he, because of an injury. Okay. So I hope you, I hope he was okay and mm -hmm. all, but uh, the, the, the bummer about that was I had my no surgery scheduled uh, right after the fight for December. And I, it was a nose injury I was dealing with for three years, you know? So I got my surgery done. Um, then now, um, now it's on, like, I just started sparring about a month ago. So, um, with, with a helmet now and everything like, so I'm taking care of myself. Uh, I'm getting back in shape in top shape. Uh, pretty soon I should be in top shape. I, I'm, I'm probably going to do one more, um, 
my, my goal is to get down to 155 mm-hmm. and uh, we'll see whether I do it in 170 one more time or I get all the way down to 155. But eventually I am a lightweight fighter mm-hmm. and that is my goal. Mm-hmm. I will fight the rest of my fights at lightweight when I get down there. Uh, mm-hmm. I might do one more welterweight fight mm-hmm. uh, just to uh, just to, just to uh, get a fight in before I get down to 155. But my real goal is 155, and I am a 155er. If I can make 155 right away, I will do that. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I truly do see myself as in in the very very near future being one of the best 155ers in the world. And then getting a championship, getting a the, that UFC lightweight championship s- shortly after that, and hopefully mm-hmm. be one of the greatest 155ers of all time. And that's that's a tr- truly a goal for mine. Like I have that type of crazy confidence since I was younger, where it was like slightly delusional, where I don't see anybody beating me, even when I was even when I didn't really have much experience. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anybody beating me and I still have that, you know, like I, as, and, and now it's, now it's even more real to me, like, mm-hmm. because I, I had, I had gotten so much better. I put the hours in and I really do feel like this, this is my time. I'm coming into my prime at 27. Uh, I haven't had too much damage from injury, from fights or anything like that. Uh, I've had my injuries here and there, but nothing, nothing crazy with uh, any, any type of brain damage or any type of uh, really bad chronic injury. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really coming into my own right now and I'm going to make, my plan is to make a real UFC run uh, and, and fight like every three, two months and be extremely active because I really do feel now that I just turned 27, it's now or never for me. So mm-hmm. Uh, my my goal is in, in the next two years by by the next two years I make it to the UFC and I really make a strong run and no time wasting like just all gas no breaks you know that's amazing and I really and I wanted to say once again Eunice thank you so much for willing to come on finally we can make this happen the timing was perfect yes. uh, the chemistry was on point today and one thing I want to propose to you is because what I like to do is I like to have returnees come on and I like to do what's called fight companions mm-hmm. eventually like Joe Rogan does but what yeah. I want to do I want to do one with you and uh, Sensei Nima where we yes. look at certain fighters and break them down like old K1 maybe old MM, UFC old pride maybe yeah. Bellator one like that would be something that I'd love to do to pick the brains in a, in a longer form conversation. So it really shows like how, how expert, how much, how much expertise and knowledge both of you have. And then I, I mean, just all play, play it off each other. What we know. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I mean, Sensei Nima, if, if you have him on with me, he'll make my job a lot easier. <laughs> that guy will break, break, especially, especially with striking, like his, his striking IQ is very, very high. And it's, I, I just happen to be so lucky to be in there um, on the, on, in his very first class, like, and everything that I've, almost everything I've learned was from him in striking. So like, mm-hmm. it's, he, 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 he will, he will, he, he I remember, I would be in a hotel and I'm, I'm about to fight soon, like uh, the next day. And he's just watching martial arts on his phone. He is truly obsessed with the game, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, like, where, whereas me, I, I don't even want to watch any fights. If I'm going to go to a fight event, I don't want to watch any fights. I, tr- be honest, I don't watch, I don't watch m- many fights, to be honest, mm-hmm. like anymore. Uh, I used to but he is like still on it all the time, always like watching new moves, new, new fights. And he, he always says like, he doesn't, he doesn't watch for entertainment anymore. It's just to learn. So uh, it's, it, he, he'll break down to a T, you know, like he'll make my job easier. So yeah, bring him on. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's do it. So, you know, Yunez, as I said, you know, um, once again, uh, I want to thank you for really taking time to come on today. It was 
an amazing show. Where can people connect with you if uh, if, if they're if uh, since we have many fans, my show whether it's MMA, the Kyokushin crowd's gonna start following you. So once you said oh. Enshin Kyokushin, you're gonna get a bunch of follows probably. So cool, I'm cool. hoping I'm yeah. hoping uh, they they uh, the community lives up to its word and just starts blowing up your follows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, so if 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 you're interested in following my journey, uh, my Instagram is my main thing to see my uh, uh, my journey and all. It's Eunice.MMA. So Y-O-U, like you, Ness, N-E-S, dot M-M-A. Mm-hmm. So easy. Y-O-U-N-E-S dot M-M-A. So Eunice.MMA. Perfect. Thanks, man. So guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, follow Younes, uh, but also like, share, subscribe to the Drew Experience. We're only growing. It's like a stock. It keeps going and going, but it's a community that grows and grows and grows to elevate combat sports. So make sure to like, share, subscribe, follow this guy here and follow Kaizen MMA. Also Nima Mazari, his sensei, because these guys are... They're just amazing human beings, and that's the goal with the show. Show how combat sports has an amaz- has amazing human beings. Thank you, thank you, and and it's amazing how you, like people really should if they if they're interested in martial arts, they really should follow and watch every single one of your podcasts because everyone that you bring on is amazing person, like high level high level human being, not just high level martial artist, high level human being, and there's just so much to be learned from all these people that you bring on, like for even my own sensei, sensei Nima, I watched the entire podcast with, when, when you had him on, there's so many things that I didn't even know about sensei Nima, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, just because you know, somebody that Drew brings on doesn't mean you can't watch that episode and learn something new about him. Cause uh, rarely do we have like 45 minutes where we just, talk about our experiences you know maybe we say it here and there but it's not like a setting like this where we're talking all about our experiences and what we've learned so uh, everyone everyone whoever is interested in martial arts has something to learn from your podcast so thank you i'm so humble that made my morning yeah all right and i and i mean it i mean oh thanks man well as i said guys make sure to like share subscribe follow him and the show will be out in probably about a week or two because March was a crazy month for guests. Yeah. Just the timing, all the guests just came on at the same time. So I'm putting out episodes bi-weekly for March, but in April, it's one, it's three episodes per month. Yeah. Hey, this was amazing, man. Uh, and uh, anytime you want me again, uh, after I make uh, some more pro fights and what else, and we want to revisit and you want to hear new plans. And once I'm getting close to the UFC, like, get me on anytime I'm, I'm here. Thanks man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.